Hello everyone, AM Harbinger here, and today I'll be talking about The Surge 2. In regards, I really liked the first game. Despite hating the stamina meter system, the science fiction adventure had me hooked because of the dark atmosphere and great bosses. The sequel resolves many of the issues I had with the first game, also including some more great bosses, which is what I was looking forward to. This is a Souls-like game, so it's going to be hard and you're going to die a lot, but overcoming these intense challenges is what makes The Surge 2 worth playing. The Search 2 takes place years after the events of the first game. The city of Jericho, a haven for the rich and elite, has been quarantined after an outbreak called Defrag. Those infected have gone mad and started killing without mercy. Those who've survived the infection now fight among one another for basic supplies. You take control of a custom character, nameless and voiceless. After waking up from your coma, you just try and survive against the deadly people, military forces, and hybrid creatures that inhabit the city. Eventually, the story starts to incorporate military cover-ups, unethical experiments, and your importance to the entire situation, escalating the situation slowly, but always keeping you at the center of everything. The protagonist is dull. Warren from the first game wasn't an incredible character, but at least he had a voice and personality, linking in his desires to what was happening, but here you're mostly just a hollow shell completing objectives. This extends to the supporting cast as well. Most of them are forgettable, and unless they were repeated characters during the story, I mostly forgot they even existed. This is not to say that the story was bad. It served its purpose of providing reasons for your actions and what was at stake, the game does build up the world with audio logs and providing context to what's happening in the outside world, but the characters themselves were not memorable and the story itself, it's pretty mediocre but still a serviceable narrative in terms of a science fiction story. The Search 2's gameplay is built on the first game. You'll target specific body parts and slice them off when enough damage is dealt with. However, now depending on which part you slice will determine what items you can loot. This includes weapons, gear, and upgrades. So if you want an enemy's weapon or need a leg upgrade, target that part and cut it off. Usually, heavily armored limbs carry much more valuable items since they require more damage to cut off, whereas limbs without armor provide least rewards. Lots of equipment comes from slicing enemy parts off. With the exception of a few armor sets, you'll need to grind and defeat enemies to earn the best armor, weapons, and implants, with bosses providing unique upgrades if you slice off their parts. You are encouraged to obtain armor sets since they provide unique upgrades for having half or the complete set. These include helpful bonuses such as improved stamina, health, or extra damage. Weapons come in a large number of varieties including swords, spears, fists, and more. Each one has unique attack animations and their own strengths and weaknesses. You are encouraged to experiment as certain weapons and armor work better in select situations, with some carrying unique buffs such as fire, electricity, or nanite damage, but if you love a certain armor or weapon, you can constantly upgrade it as much as you want until it reaches max level. The leveling system itself is pretty traditional. You earn tech scrap, which also serves as a currency and needed for upgrade items, to increase your core level and boost your health, stamina, or energy. This also allows you to equip more items as each armor and implant uses a certain amount of core energy. Implants are passive abilities, called boosters, and manual injectors can be used when you occur enough energy during combat. Energy is unique to the Surge and is obtained by attacking enemies but it drains constantly. This encourages aggressive play as energy is not only used for injectors but also prompting finishing moves which allow you to slice off opponent limbs and it can also boost certain attributes if you have the right build. Since one hit can be lethal in the Surge and the stamina meter limits your mobility and actions, you constantly have this tug of war between aggressive offensive play and defensive play. Enemies are without mercy and come in a large variety. You can start off fighting hostile civilians, then train military, and eventually hybrid creatures. If you are killed, you lose all your tech scrap. You can't return to the area where you were killed and get it all back, but it's timed and if the time is up, you lose everything. Since enemies are not handicapped with the stamina meter, like you, Death can be a severe consequence, especially when you need the necessary materials in order to upgrade your character to take on much more difficult challenges. However, you're never really limited to your equipment. It's usually determined by how skilled you are in the surge that determines your success. 
The bosses are the best part of the surge too, each offering unique challenges to overcome. The difficulty does vary between some of the bosses, with the more powerful bosses being at the beginning in the game, but the later half having a lot weaker enemies, usually from recycled enemies that you've faced in the past, which can be a little disappointing. The world itself has changed from the first game. Instead of just one linear path, players can explore a semi-open world that's separated into areas and take on side missions. In addition, the game offers a larger variety of areas, with Jericho having a range of military bases, a school, a garden, and other areas to explore. The issue with these areas is navigating. Since you don't have access to a map and there are no waypoints, it's easy to get lost. You do get an idea of where to go since the maps have unique designs and monuments that can keep track of your area. But eventually, when you start to open the various shortcuts, you can get lost very easily. It's also especially frustrating when you're looking for specific side objectives when there's really no way to keep track of where certain areas are. As a side note, when you're online, players can leave messages to aid other players. You can leave likes and dislikes to ensure that more helpful messages remain longer, but if you want to go into the adventure without any aid, you can turn, turn off the online function. After completing the 6-8 hour adventure, you can replay the game in New Game Plus. Not only do you get to keep your equipment, but there is also a new cutscene that you get to see at the beginning of this new campaign. Also, the game does get harder, with new enemy placements and stronger foes, especially when it comes to how much damage they can take. Graphically, the Search 2 does look pretty good. The character animations are average at best, but the bosses and enemies look phenomenal, especially the nanite monsters that you encounter later on in the game. They look exceptionally done. So all in all, it does the job and it is fantastically designed from the enemy's perspective. The environments are also detailed, but it's not a huge step up from the original Surge. If you played the original game and played side by side, it's not that big of a leap, which is fine. The first Surge looked great and this Surge looks great as well. It's nothing truly monumental, but it does the job and there are no tactical issues that I can speak of. You have the occasional enemy glitching out or body just going fl flaring into the distance, but nothing truly monumental happened. I didn't experience any crashes or anything, so... You know, it's good to have a game that doesn't have any major issues. As I stated before, the characters are mostly forgettable, but the voice acting is adequate. It does the job, and none of the characters were terribly voiced. The soundtrack was hit or miss, most of the score went over my head, but the boss tracks were amazing. They got me into the mood of finding something powerful and kept me hooked, especially during the final boss fight. What is done exceptionally well is the combat sound effects. When you hear metal on metal action or when you slice it through a limb, it's done exceptionally well and should be noted on. When you slice through flesh using metal, you definitely get to hear the sound just going through bone and flesh. Where'd you think you are? This seems trivial, but with a game that relies so heavily on grinded for resources and experience, the fact there is no time saver microtransactions should be noted. I've seen this happen in so many other games, the fact that the Surge 2 doesn't have it should be complimented for this. I just would have hated the fact that a game that could have been easily monetized is not is wonderful. If you want something, you have to earn it. And that seems like such a trivial thing to bring up, but in modern gaming, it seems like it's everywhere. And the fact that this game could have easily implemented some sort of get resources quickly system and they didn't should be noted. So thank you for not doing that. The Search 2 is a challenging and decent science fiction title. The boss battles are incredible, and the areas you'll explore offer more variety than the first game. You'll constantly be tested with difficult opponents and expected to learn from your mistakes. It can be frustrating at times, and you'll want to hurl your controller at the screen, which I wanted to do several times. However, if you stick with it, you'll find the challenging gameplay more rewarding when you finally overcome that hurdle. Just don't expect a meaningful connection with the characters during this journey.